we have a guest <laughs> joining us in the studio. Journalist Anne Kiguta. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How are you? Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now look at me. <laughs> Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Yeah. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Mimi No, no. It's fine. Mm. The city is well. Imagine. <laughs> it's full of water. It's full of water. I mm. never knew water could be so attractive. <laughs> <laughs> I really... I'm so impressed. And you know what? Since you were talking about romance and all of that, mm -hmm. my day is already brighter. Once I walked in, look what I got. From city. City gave me Chocolate. Something. Chocolate. This man. This, this man, guy. This man is not doing regular. Single. <laughs> no. no, no, no. He's doing... <laughs> He's playing the long game. He's playing the long game. Simfa. <laughs> we see you, sir. Stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> so just clear your 14. <laughs> I'll work on it. I'll mm, work on it. Just clear your fourteenth. You just never know. <laughs> Could be an elegant so what have you been up to, Anne? Well, I think primarily observation. Observing what? Observing Kenya, observing Kenyans. Um, I mean, I did politics for a long time as a journalist. Um, when I left politics, I ventured out. Well, I, to be fair, I'd already ventured out with my own production company. Mm. Uh, but I just decided to do my own thing away from local politics, away from the local scene. Um, which I think was getting rather toxic. Mm. Uh, so I've been in and out of Kenya, moderating events, hosting them. When I'm here, you know, I, I observe, I pay attention. Um, I think I've always been very passionate about our issues and, and very concerned right now with, you know, the landscape and even how our industry is handling, you know, politics at this time. I think mm. for a long time we've we've really... Um, kind of been the bastion, if you like, of, of independence mm. uh, in Africa, at least, the African media. Mm. And, you know, by the time I was exiting, I had some hmms and some pauses about mm. the direction we're taking. I'm not too sure if we're heading the right direction now. But, yeah, I think I've been observing mostly mm. our politics, listening a little bit more. We want to hear your verdict. But before you do that, yeah. let CT give you the day's proverb. Ooh. Uh-huh. And um, every week, City goes to one African country. He's supported by Ecobank. He goes there, he mines proverbs from that country. Then he comes and gives us a proverb a day from that country. Uh -huh. Your job is to listen to the proverb and give us your interpretation of okay. the proverb. Your interpretation, oh, not dear. the interpretation. Okay. Your interpretation of the proverb. Courtesy of Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank, you've heard about it. Yes, of course. It's in very many countries across Africa mm -hmm. and outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. It's in the UK, it's in France, it's in China. It's in, in the Dubai. UAE, oh. right? It's in yeah. France. It's in, I said France. Yeah. You can say again, the UK, it's in the UK. <laughs> and it's in China. <laughs> it's in China. And in France. <laughs> Don't forget France. <laughs> oh, just in case you forgot, it's in France. <laughs> and South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's also in Kenya. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. How many people employed? For over 14,000 staff, yeah. and I've got to look at that number again because we're looking at 35 um, countries in Africa mm. where Echo Bank is. Mm. And imagine in Kenya, branches in Nairobi, Eldred, Kisi, Kisumu, Nakuru, Mombasa, Nyeri, mm. Thika, Karatina, and express points across the country for convenient banking for customers. Seamless transactions, waking up in one city, transacting in another, bringing Africa together and throwing its support behind great sporting event of the AFCON uh, tournament that's taking place, mm -hmm. which Nigeria will win. <laughs> okay. okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll be here, no matter what. City, <laughs> this week you're in? I'm in uh, the country of Zimbabwe. Am I in Zimbabwe? You are. <laughs> Okay, so not France. Yes. Zimbabwe, yes. <laughs> a coward has no scar. A mm. coward has no scar. Mm. Mm. And Kiguta? I love how you pick them. Uh. Absolutely. A coward has no scar because they've got no story to tell. What have they fought? What have they stood up to? Of what course they, they have no scar. There's a little detail out there run away from. Huh? Mm. Mm. <laughs> and you know, you might trip and fall. <laughs> And get a scar. And get a and scar. Get a scar. <laughs> <laughs> that is the lamest scar ever. Have a scar because you put yourself out there 
you were in the ring you took a swing something swung back you overcame it you know mm. I love it. City, well done. You're, you're just hitting all the right notes this morning, aren't you? I told you, 14th. Keep it clear. <laughs> Keep it clear. Okay, you just never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know the, what the next swing comes with. Now, listen. A lot's happening in the country. Yeah. One of the things that we are seeing this morning is um, the housing levy conversation. Mm. Um, there's been public participation in the name of forums that have been conducted by parliament in various parts of the country they concluded on uh, monday or tuesday tuesday and now it's for the joint committees of parliament to prepare their report and then take it to the full house in the meantime the courts have said this issue of the housing levy this and the other and now the national assembly through its speaker moses Otangula, have moved to the supreme court seeking to suspend a judgment that declared the housing levy unconstitutional mm. the speaker said in a no in a notice filed on tuesday at the apex court that he was dissatisfied with the decision made by the court of appeal on the 26th of january declining to allow the government to continue collecting the levy court of appeal judges lydia chode john mativo and moniki gashoka had ruled that public interest tilted in favor of not suspending the high court decision which found the levy illegal so speaker has gone to court on that on the other side teachers through cupet teachers are protesting the housing levy fund deductions in their january salary terming them illegal and in contravention of a court order that suspended the tax yesterday the kenya union of primary post-primary education teachers cupet demanded a refund of the deducted amount and threatened to sue the tsc and their ceo nancy masharia and other officials in their personal capacities for contempt of court. Mm. Okay. Azimio Laumoja, one Kenya leader, Raila Odinga, is proposing a national dialogue as a way out of the housing levy umpers. Odinga is pushing for a national engagement, which he says will bring in experts from around the world. Hey, Raila loves experts from around <laughs> the world. <laughs> to implement the affordable housing project and how to finance it. So Raila wants hmm. experts to open the server experts to talk about housing <laughs> levy experts to talk about IBC yes. experts on this and that from but France from France <laughs> <laughs> and yes. elsewhere if you look at all these things and mm. what's what's your reading of it what is it about this particular housing program mm. by the government it's not a new one by the Ruto administration now mm. it's been there before it's a conversation that was there before as me you had a plan for housing what is it about this housing program the implementation of it and the feedback from the public yeah I, you know for me it's just the usual circus you know when government projects are concerned it's about who got the tender at the end of the day it's about mm. the money it's not about whether or not we need housing obviously we do right so in fact whilst uh, the Right Honourable, former Prime Minister, a um, couple of years ago was in, ed, uh, was in housing, I think, lands in housing, was it? Mm -hmm. Was that the docket? Mm. He had something similar. So, so it's not something that we do not need. We need it. It was roads. Roads, public works. Yes. 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 Mm. Housing. And housing. Yes. There you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had something similar. I think w we need the houses, surely. The question is who's making the money out of it. That's the real problem. If we knew how exactly this thing is being tendered which companies are profiting from it who are they associated with then i really do think what would rise to the surface mm. is what the politicals are arguing about but beyond that you know I, I also find it curious that you know this housing matter is so loud in the face of all the other challenges that we have um kenyans are struggling from many things i think moses Kuria, the cabinet secretary might have put it um in a bit of a tawny manner but mm. he said we're dying of many things right there are many other priorities I, I i don't know if it's strange to you that housing is has become the number one agenda on the table it may be a comms issue i'm mm. not sure if state house comms are, are being unable to communicate to the other priorities in the country but it's, it's just a bit much don't you think mm. is it you you talked about um the tenders and who's getting the contract mm. does it matter to Kenyans? Does it matter to the citizens who are being told to contribute towards this levy? Does it matter to the citizens who are the intended beneficiary? Does it matter who builds the house? 
Well, I mean, it, 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 with the history of houses falling in Kenya, it matters who builds the house. But I think, you know, you always have to contribute something. I, I don't think Kenyans would have a problem in contributing to something which they knew would actually benefit them at the end of the day. What, what we have is a lot of white elephants, all right? What we have is our money being taken from us and then the services we're expecting from it not forthcoming and, and that's you could say the same thing for you know the new health insurance or whatever have you you know i don't mind paying if i'm going to get the benefit if i know how those houses are going to be allocated if those houses are actually going to be affordable you know let's define that term as well you know um but you know take a look at the markets that were built for uh, was it um this you know, this sort of council markets, the public markets. Mm. At the end of the day, they were all allegedly, let me use that term, allegedly mm. grabbed by either certain business interests, certain even ethnic interests, mm. all right? And then, so the spread isn't right. It's, it's not, I don't think the issue is whether or not we're contributing. Yes, we could talk about the amounts. Surely we're in the middle of a recession. But at the end of the day, do we, do we actually profit from it? What What... So what are you taxed on that works? It's mm. a trust deficiency. I think so. The thing certainly. is, just you just you hear the government saying this, and you're like, ah, uh, uh, I don't trust that I'm actually gonna end up in mm. any of those houses. Mm. I don't trust that these houses are gonna be built as per requirement, mm -hmm. as per what has been designed. I don't mm -hmm. trust. I don't trust. I don't trust. I think that by the time this project is done somebody will have spirited with the money and the cement and the iron bars exactly. and everything else plus the cabro and i'll be left there with like a thing and i'm told ingia ile ni nyumba now let a million si tattoo. Nyumba. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly now let a million tattoo there's so many layers to mm. this and uh, i think we can't run away from yes individual interests that lie across board um you always find that if there's a pet project for somebody regardless of what the impetus behind it is mm -hmm. that they will cheer they will clap they will ask you know people to come behind and support so you will find that you have folks who will support the issue whether or not they truly believe in it but because of the allegiance that has uh, is, is, is being demanded, they mm -hmm. will support it and they will ask for support from different corners. Many people have given a reasons as to why they don't um, mm. want to go along with this. And people have said things like, well, okay, what happens if I don't meet the threshold for this however many much percent that you require for me to then purchase this house? Mm. How are we sure? And I think this is the thing. I think all of this hinges on that mistrust that has very quickly gone to distrust mm -hmm. but how are we actually sure that this project <coughs> will end up in as many kenyans owning these homes number one number two when you look at all of the things that are happening in the country at the same time is this a priority issue for kenyans today mm. and unfortunately the resounding answer from many quarters is that it is not you know but then it would seem as though the government in the from the place of the executive hell bent on making sure that this thing goes through regardless now would it be time to listen to some voices and even be logical in that place and say all right should we put this down and bring something else into play or are we those we say we started on this thing until and unless it finishes this path we will not let down and that's why I'm saying there's so many layers to it. Mm. But for me, the thing that shouts out the loudest is mm. that the distrust of something that comes about from government as to whether it will actually make its way mm. and, f and see the light of day is an issue that must be dealt with. That why has it gotten to the point whereby it doesn't matter what you say, you could actually come and say, to anything you say today, people will doubt whether it is actually going to happen. And for a country to be in that state, where there's that continuous perennial doubt, that's something that must be dealt with. It could be housing today. It could be dams tomorrow. Well, we know what happened to that. Mm. It could be stadia the next day. We, again, we know what happened mm. with that. We don't know. Oh, it, there you go. <laughs> mm. So imagine this has joined a list of many other things that didn't see the light of day yeah and that's something that must be questioned and dealt with and people are saying okay well is there distrust unfounded and it isn't so but then you want to take from? from very little that they have left to put into this project which they don't even know is going to come about 
No, Where does it come from? Yeah, the, the list the, of the many centuries. other things. Yeah, it's, it's what's that thing you normally say? Mm. Historical injustices. Experience. <laughs> I mean, what? Lived experience. Lived experience. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Look at all the things that they've said we'll do. It doesn't matter whether it was this one or it's that. It's that position whereby this you said we were going to do this we said we we're going to do we said we we're going to do this that has not happened what characterizes this particular one differently from all these other things which bear the same lineage that they didn't happen so here we are with very little left and now on top of those things that you're saying we want to do you actually want to take some more from me mm. to make it happen <laughs> of course not mm. that's where the dissatisfaction with it comes from that's where the doubt comes from so so if you're in government what would you do do you stop everything and then you say okay can we have a trust can we have a conversation about trust i swear to you haki you can trust me no i don't think we should have a conversation Cross my I heart and hope to done. die let's everything else i'm not going to start anything until you trust me no i mean what do you do as a government no what do you is it not the person who said actions speak louder than words yeah. knew what they were saying so i need so i need money so that i can have actions but is it housing that you want to do now yes is it is it now that's the question is that is that a priority yes. right now yes where are people living today in slums in uh, sharks mm -hmm which are being rained on and being swept away and they cannot afford mm. this option that you're giving to them no we want to give it to them as an option for give them to pay to them. for mm. you want to give it to them no so we are giving it to them after they have given us the money their hard-earned money so are they you really giving it you are giving them an option city they already have an option no they don't yes they do yes they do there's always an option what's the option what is the option to somebody who has woken up this morning in a slum when it rained it they were not sleeping what is the option to somebody who has woken up this morning they are looking for where they can use a toilet this is a woman who's woken up she's preparing her children to go to school she needs to use a bathroom everybody is up everybody is up and around and about where does she go to a toilet what is the option for her? what is the option for that same same person who's looking okay me my children my cousin's children my sister's children my husband my everybody we are all in the same room what is the option that is a very good question eric <coughs> and i will answer it this way yes the option that this individual has has always been there mm -hmm. and that is what many of the governments we've had successively don't represent mm -hmm. a government that actually understands the needs of the citizenry and meet it not seek to meet it actually meet it the issue here is that the options that exist have been extinguished by these very same people sometimes the options aren't there they've always been there mm -hmm. in fact the reason why we have a tax system on that the reason why it's graduated is so that people who think they worked harder than others and earn more will pay more why do they pay more so that those who don't have as much as them can also benefit because Somewhere along the uh, line, in the circuitous manner in which economies work, they are part and parcel of the wealth creation that enables you to have your wealth. Now, if indeed we have taxes and we have the money, and the things that are supposed to ensure, we call them amenities, social mm. amenities, are not provided for by the government. Yeah. It isn't that the option was not there. The taxes were paid. The options were always there. It is somebody who took away the options. That is the reality. Okay. Mm. So being where you are, so what do you do? Uh, so as, as government, what would you do? As government, I would halt all these projects to begin with. Okay. Halt. Completely halt. Stop everything. Stop. Anything that is a capital project that requires a lot of money, you mm. stop. Mm -hmm. You actually look and say, how much do we have? Uh, this is not, I'm not even inventing the wheel here. Mm. I'm just regurgitating what Kibaki did. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You pause and you say, let's give ourselves a year and see how it is we can collect our funds. Find ways of collecting this money and let's see how much we can actually collect. Mm. We'll try and work out and finish the projects that we didn't finish. But we're not building anything new. Mm -hmm. No new fangled ideas. Then after the one year, we say, okay, this is what we have. Then we start living with what we have and say, folks, this is what we have and this is how we're going to go about it. We may need to borrow just a little bit so that we do this and the other. That way, it's called living within your means. We haven't been living within our means since Uhuru became president. Mm. President Ruto has come in. Now we are living way beyond our means. 
that's where we are. Mm. Yes. City would be a very harsh headmaster, I, I, I see, and and he possibly you get results. But you know, there's also the reality. He was. Yeah. He was a headmaster. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But governments also must deliver. Governments are elected on pledges. Governments are political well they're, they're the working arm of a political process that the 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 product of a political process and at the end of the day those stakeholders are going to be coming back in five years asking what i do agree that projects need to be revised rethought but at the end of the day the president needs something to open for all of us to clap no, to he say, doesn't. To, he say doesn't. to say tick <laughs> Politically, he does. He Politically, does not. he absolutely he does. does. In this not Kenya. Of course he does. He Let's take does a break. not. Let's take a break. 27 minutes to nine. Kenya's biggest conversation this whole morning. We are hosting Anne Kiguta, journalist. She's our guest. We are to host the new chancellor of the University of Nairobi. Unfortunately, he's not able to join us for another meeting. <laughs> this housing levy conversation is a big one. And CT, you are saying... Stop everything, you know. And Anne was saying, "All right, okay. A government stopping everything is a government that's basically shooting itself, no. not in the foot, in the head. The it head. It, it isn't stopping everything. Mm. It is stopping new spending. Look, what I'm actually saying is this. Um, yeah. You ask me, what do you do? Mm. You look at best practices. We are not the first country on this planet to have such problems. Mm. There are people who've had similar problems and they've been able to find a solution to it, some sort of solution. We ourselves did find a solution internally. That's why I keep bringing up the name of uh, President Mwai Kibaki. But I want to pause for a second. Okay. Many people don't take into consideration that when they look at the very many estates that exist in this country, mm. These estates were built by the government. Call it Otiende, call it Ngei, call it Hudu Uruma, call it whatever you want. Mm -hmm. This national housing was responsible for some of those things. If you go to places like Buruburu, that one we were assisted by funding from, uh, it was the UK, okay? Mm. There's a certain fund, I'm trying to remember the name of that fund. That the came, Commonwealth. Yeah, Commonwealth, mm. Huyo, mm. okay? Now, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, World Bank, Bretton Woods Institution and their wisdoms are the ones who sort of like advisors out of this thing of government being involved in building and so forth. There are very many estates in very many cities, in very many big towns that were headquarters of the provinces that have houses that were built by government. Those houses were built and they were cadres for what you could afford. Okay? Somehow we did away with that one. Now, here we are. Mm. In the absence of the government building, and yet with a population increase and what we call an urban drift, people moving from the rural areas to the urban centers, not Nairobi now with devolution, surely there ought to have been a plan as to how these people are going to be housed. Mm. Mm. Because the deficit, if you compare those who need houses and those who actually have houses, the rural areas don't quite have that problem. People tend to have houses. You may think of them as you may, but they do have houses. Houses are a priority, but are they a priority above health, above education? No. But what they are, they are a basic right. They are a fundamental right that you have as a citizen of this country. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a right, then these people whom mm -hmm. you've elected are the ones who have the burden, and literally it is a burden, to ensure that this right is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. If not to build for you, to enable you to be able to build. And the argument is that mm -hmm. what we're seeing now is supposed to be that. Mm -hmm. The government enabling you to actually own mm -hmm. your own house. It is Or to live in a decent That house. is really good thinking. Okay. And to live with dignity. I think dignity is a fundamental human right. So, it, it you is. know, for, for me, it does not suffice to say that, you know, you have some sort of shelter over you, mm. you know. As long as you have food and you get school, you know, the wheels are sort of turning. I think I think Kenyans have been stripped of dignity. Dignity in everything. You talk about the mistrust. It's because every day you're being shown, you know, get, get on with the bare minimum. Mm. I think it's wrong. It's dehumanizing and it affects our collective psyche and who we see ourselves as a nation. And our ability as individuals and the collective to build that. Remember the Kenya we want? Mm. The, which I'm not sure we arrived at that conclusion, but to build that Kenya. So, you know, I, th I think it's a fundamental right. I do think it does trump other rights. Um, I'm not saying education is not important, 
but you know even to be educated you have to wake up and leave from somewhere to get that education it sorts out right. very many it sorts out a, a big base mm. now then with that so what what would be the way to go what would you advise the government to do right now so the government the approach that they've taken has been challenged it's usually the process it's not those that have gone it's to court it's not the not, concept have not gone to to question the concept in no. the process mm. the process with which you brought in the housing levy you call it a tax you call it a levy you call it whatever and then you went to par- parliament you put it in the finance act but you had no regulation on how this particular levy is going to be managed challenged then now you come in with the housing uh, it's called the affordable housing bill mm. affordable housing bill you say all right so people send your memoranda this is a p- post office or you can come to parliament and drop it there and we'll we'll read it if we get time no public participation again process question and you told it this is not public participation ah it's not it okay we're going to <laughs> call people to town halls and you come and talk to us <laughs> people have gone da, 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 da. people have talked people have talked now parliament is preparing a report and they're going to discuss it well the same time. So it's all just, it's just the process that is constantly being questioned it appears like the government is ignoring the need to follow due process, due process. why because they can um why uh, but uh, you see they can also follow due process yes yeah but you know it's it's the arrogance of course that comes What's the with cost power of following i remember due process? I, I was speaking to um, a very senior member of, of the the national assembly right now and and um i won't disclose who he is but you know in a private conversation i told him you know who you're starting to sound like now the other guys mm. the other guys who just a few short one and a half years ago you were telling us or the wrong guys why because of the the arrogance that comes with election you know i i think leaders must learn to lead with humility at all times to respect the people at all times going through process like you're saying is that respect of the people is again that dignifying of the people that we're here to serve you not to lord over you we don't have a predetermined outcome we're actually going to listen to you because we believe we're here to serve you not just to push through what we want and i've taken great exception to be to be honest with um, um a lot of um, you know senior figures uh, in this administration and the tone that they are taking with Kenyans you see them on twitter you know just having absolute no regard for the people who elected them it, it's a wrong approach it's it's um, not leading with love it's not leading with honesty it's not leading people with dignity so for me you know you, you you can possibly say you know this house must be built but you know you have, have some you know, even when you're chewing you you close your mouth you know you ha- have some manners about it respect the people and i don't know why why you know we failed so much on this i'm not sure that other countries fail this badly in terms of how they speak to their people showing respect to citizens mm. showing that we're actually listening you know your opinion matters it's your opinion that got us elected because you thought we were right and that we still need to carry you with us to the end of our term for me that's even just smart politics Maybe you know they don't think it's their opinion hmm. that it's that got them elected we I mean, think it's something else what it's my money that got me elected well i think also you when you, when you look at the inter- i mean the, there's so many things that come into play here and when you look at the intent of an individual who seeks political or you know uh, um, national office when you look at the intents that will almost always inform the behavior that will mm. follow if i've come into this position <laughs> because i want to serve people then you will see that mm. it will not be it, difficult it will to not see be difficult to see but if what i have come to do is actually to uh, check for some expediency you will also see that and it will be evident in the words that i speak it will be evident in the way in which i carry myself it will be evident now in the way in which i operate within whatever office it is that i have been given but i do think here and i i, I keep saying that when somebody speaks over and over again in a, in a particular way mm. you should believe what they're saying to you you should actually hear them and 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 believe what they're saying and i do agree that it's a process issue I don't know that anybody would say I don't want a dignified place to live in. Mm. I don't know that anybody would say I would not want proper plumbing. Mm. I don't know that anybody would not say I don't want a would say I don't want a place where my children can wake up and sit and then, you know, have a little patch of something to play. I mean, mm. I don't know that anybody would refuse it. But the manner and my father used to say, it's not what you're telling me. 
it is how mm. you're telling me that will either make me accept it or reject it. Mm. And if you don't include Kenyans, and I think that's where it has failed, that a lot of government processes, and you ask if it's just in Kenya, I think there are many examples of other countries whereby it's like government is, and the executive is there, and the people are there. But if you look at jurisdictions where these processes succeed, that those who've been given temporary authority mm. carry the people along in the decisions that they make. Mm. They don't fail on the things that they say they want to do. Take your pick. Doesn't matter where you are. In Switzerland, can we build this road? Let's build it. People say, let's build the road. Okay, we build the road. Can we do, let's all do it together. Let's do it this way. You go. Japan will say, we have taxpayers' money. We want to go and use it to develop in Africa. Can we go? Yes, let's go. Let's mm. do it like this. But this lord and master mentality, whereby now that I'm here, I'm going to tell you what to do, mm. is a recipe Whether for you like failure. It or not, mm. Mm. it is what? a recipe for mm. failure. Mm. And so I do agree, as I think about mm. it, mm. that the process issue is what needs to be fixed. The position and what that position requires needs to be fixed because it will be housing today, mm -hmm. it will be an education policy tomorrow, it will be markets the next day. But if the attitude remains the same, the results. Well, remain the same. Where does this attitude come from? <laughs> Look, if you think about it, the attitude that we see being displayed by William Ruto and the people in his cabinet and those that uh, follow him in parliament is the same attitude that we saw being displayed by Uhuru Kenyatta and those in his cabinet and those that followed him in parliament. It's the same one in very many cases that we saw being displayed by Mwai Kibaki and those in his cabinet. Remember those comments of vomiting on our shoes? Mm -hmm. They came from somewhere. Yes, it's because it of some an, arrogance, arrogance that was mm. being displayed. That complete disregard for the people. Mm. Right? So what is this? Is it is it is it a power thing? It is. Is it us as a society that we allow it, we mm. we are inherently it? Yes, we are inherently it. It's entitlement that comes mm. when people are in positions of power. Whatever power, even at yes, work. Yes, it doesn't really matter. Yes, it yes, yes, doesn't really matter. Let somebody really tell me matter. to... True, true. Mm. Yes. Let somebody tell me today that mm. Ndu, you are lord and master over the three of these people. Ah, oh, it's finished. Si, si. <laughs> to turn a motor. I'm telling you, there is nothing you will not do. <laughs> when we are assigned to duties. Yes, mm. absolute power <laughs> corrupts, absolutely. Mm. Even if you, the minute you give me that position, whereby now I know that I'm calling the shots, there's something about human nature that just goes. You and know. it has to be checked. It doesn't have to be checked once. It has to be checked mm. every single the, day. There lies the crux of the matter because the people, the people, us, mm. the owners of the country, the owners of the constitution, we are the ones who allow it. We are the ones who give that leeway. Mm. Because if we don't help hold people to account, then we have allowed it. We, we don't think so, but we have. When I assume that when someone from my community is in power, then we are in power. We are not in power. Mm. That individual is in power. There's no we here. There may be a few people around this mm. person who will benefit. The rest of us, man... I'll just eat what I ate the day before and the day after that. I mean, I mean, I mean, my life will hardly change. Mm. But the sort of leaders we're talking about are leaders who change everybody's lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody benefits. Yeah. You actually see the country changing and it's clear. Now, the political class have mastered this and they've understood it. And that's why every time there's an issue, they can shake hands. They agree, they understand. The problem persists. One handshake, the problem still persists. Mm. Another handshake, the problem still persists. What we're seeing now is not William Ruto's making. It's a culmination of what has been happening for the very longest time possible. Mm. In this country? Yes. Mm. COVID came along and did all manner of crazy things. Mm. Then, the Uhuru government of which William Ruto was part of borrowed as though there was no tomorrow. Okay? Culmination. You borrow. See, there are debts. Mm. So you have to pay. You've got a moratorium of 10 years. 10 years are over. Mm. Ruto, you take over. It's due in your term. Mm. Now, when you are carrying on practices that were carried on in a time when ostensibly we had the e illusion of plenty, 
and you're carrying out the same practices when we actually literally have nothing and we can clearly see there's nothing you stand out but you're not doing anything that others didn't do mm. so here we are and who allows it you know people ask what do we do what do you mean what do you do there is a great deal you can do mm. but if you've decided there isn't much you can do then so be it then you won't do it but Eric, if you'd allow me to chime in, you know, I completely agree. We, we've, we've sort of worshipped man, if you like. We, th that's what we give our leaders. We don't give them honor. We don't give them respect. We give them worship. Mm. I remember when I was hosting um, political programs and, um, you know, I was one of the first women to host very, you know, hard-talking political shows. And 99% of the time what I was told, even by the audience, is, you know, have some respect for your elders this is i was not speaking to my <laughs> my, my daddy <laughs> i was holding a political leader accountable on what they had said and doing it on behalf of the people so we we do have perhaps it's a colonial hangover you know where we we worship and we idolize people who are in power instead of understanding that no this there is a social contract here um you're supposed to meet this end of the bargain but i think something is changing i watched the um the the protests uh, by women this past week and the women in which um, first I think by and large you may correct me if I'm wrong I think it was organized outside of women in establishment yeah I think there was something organic that was happening where women as a constituency said wait a minute actually we, we can say something about this mm -hmm. we've been waiting for somebody in some office to say something we can say something and they went to the streets and they levied their political power in that way and then when the politicos showed up and tried to own the process they have been checkmating them right there where they booed them in rallies i think we've been seeing a lot of booing so mm -hmm. uh, you know and so on and telling people to go home and and following them up on social media and not relenting and and i think ct what i'm trying to say is I, I want to believe because i've always you know as a broadcaster i've always had to to trust the public that my audience is smart enough to see through these things, you know, is smart enough to respond to the questions we ask and whatnot. And I think there's a shift that's happening in society. When you see, you know, you, you can't just go and, and, and boo the president. I mean, when you, you know, can't. And I'm not even suggesting that necessarily. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, no, no, you're, no, you're spot on. Mm. You see, yeah. the vomiting of shoes that Sir Edward Clay spoke of mm. is with us again. Mm. We said this of Uhuru. Mm. Two things. When you have a president who is polite and doesn't shout at you and insult you, you think the guy is weak. Okay? Mm. Now, when you have a citizenry who give you second, third, fourth chances, you think they are stupid. They are not. They are watching you. And if you haven't noticed, every election they speak, that should give you the warning. It should tell you that it can happen to anybody. We exit more elected leaders than we True. Yes. So, you are 100% right. Mm. Yes, it, it, there is a shift. Mm. A clear shift. My favorite bunch of individuals who represent this shift are the judiciary. Mm. Mm. Man, goodness. These guys are hitting sixes all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> on a daily. Mm. <laughs> when they slip up a four. Mm. <laughs> So, when you see this taking place, it reminds me of a time, I keep saying this, I was also young once, uh, when I was younger, mm. and you would find one brave soul standing up and doing something which they were not supposed to do when you had a single party system. Or you find two or three parliamentarians daring the government and saying, no, 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 this, uh, uh, so, sorry. Now, you see, that moment is with us. I agree with you. Yeah. It actually is with us. Yeah. Mm. What should happen to the housing level? This housing program. You know, I'm torn it's, about. It's being fought, fought on very many fronts. Mm. I, I am torn. There's court. There's parliament. There's unions. public. There's yes. unions. Yes, there's yes, yes. It is not the housing levy that they are talking or complaining about. If you ask me, mm. it's what it represents. You mm -hmm. actually think you can keep taking money from us and you don't do anything that you're supposed to do with it. Kifua. Yes. Yeah. That is... In Kiswahili, that is my view. Mm -hmm. No, we are not going to allow you to do that. That is what I hear them saying. Mm -hmm. Not the housing levy. People want houses, for heaven's sake. Of course, of course. They do. It represents, yeah. And yeah. that's what I was saying. It could be housing today, it could be something else tomorrow. Mm. But if it comes across in the same way, mm. it's still going to be rejected. You know? 
So you can imagine, and somebody would think, because is that not the question blatantly that the president asked? Here we are, as, you know, trying to do a good thing for you. Don't you see it? Don't you get it? But he didn't get it. Yes. He's the one who's not getting it here. Yeah. It's not the housing that's the no. issue. Yeah. It's the screen that's behind this. And what are you actually telling Kenyans? That's what they're not happy with. And believe me, look at the character of the opposition to this thing. It is varied. Mm. It doesn't matter where you look it, in society. It, it is running away from the politician. Exactly. Mm. It's rejected across fronts. Yes. So you must ask yourself, if it was just one group of people who were saying, no, 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 then you would say, okay, these guys are being petty. But from unions of teachers, from the judiciary, mm -hmm. from, from society, it's, from communities, mm -hmm. from people who work in corporate and the private mm -hmm. sector, everybody's having an issue with And it. all of them, the president and these people try to profile them and said, it's the people who have <laughs> jobs <laughs> who are fighting this thing so that you don't get jobs. <laughs> it's the people who yeah. are living in houses and they have mortgages who are fighting this thing so that you don't get yes, uh, yes. a house. Mm. And that profiling is still not working. It's failing. It's because firing. if there was then support from the hustlers, then the hustlers would be coming out to say, no, 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 no. Have you, Eric, yeah. have you not seen the protests outside the judiciary? Oh, yeah, there's that. By who? The uh, workers. By, uh, housing <laughs> workers. Mm. Mm. In the squeaky clean helmets and yeah. yes. overalls. Yeah, it's because they're not at work. Okay. Mm. That's it. why they're clean today. Mm. Otherwise, they'd be having a all over their eyelids. I hear you. <laughs>